Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing atypical antidepressants. We have already talked about uh, the SSRIs, SNRIs. We've already talked about TCAs and MAOIs. So today, we're only going to be discussing the atypical antidepressants. Now, if you guys want to watch or listen to the other lectures about uh, antidepressants, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mad Medicine, where you can find playlists for psychiatry and pharmacology and in those playlists you can find antidepressant lectures. Now don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and with that being said let's talk about these drugs for step one. We're going to begin by talking about depression aka the big sad. The big sad is a mental health disorder that's characterized with a persistently depressed mood, loss of interest, and a significant impairment in your day-to-day -day function. That's what happens with depression. It's very common. Now, uh, we know that this is a multifactorial disease. There's many factors like genetics, biology, uh, physio uh, f psychology, and the environment that play a role and it's associated with decreased levels of neurotransmitters, specifically uh, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Now the drugs we use usually target these, uh, nor uh, these neurotransmitters, and that is because we want to increase the levels of these neurotransmitters in order to treat the depression. So when it comes to treatment, you have cognitive behavioral therapy and antidepressants. And in the antidepressants, we've already discussed these four classes. So today, we're going to be focusing on atypical antidepressants. And there are six atypical antidepressants that you need to know. So the first one is called bupropion. Bupropion inhibits norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake. So it's going to cause an increase in norepinephrine and an increase in dopamine in the uh, the synaptic cleft because it's inhibiting the reuptake of these drugs of these neurotransmitters sorry now the mechanism of action is unknown and uh, we know that it has no effect on serotonin because it only increases norepinephrine and dopamine and it also increases the presynaptic release of catecholamines now bupropion is also used for smoking cessation and ADHD, and specifically ADHD because it has the same end effect as CNS stimulants like uh, like amphetamines, right? You're going to increase norepinephrine and dopamine release with uh, ADHD medications, and in this case with bupropion, you're not going to have more release, but you're going to uh, prevent the reuptake leading to more uh, norepinephrine and dopamine in the synaptic cleft. Now, when it comes to toxicity, it's also very similar to stimulants. You're going to have tachycardia, insomnia. You'll also have uh, weight loss because you're going to have lack of appetite. That can often happen. You'll also have headache. And the one thing to understand, the very high highest yield thing about bupropion, in my opinion, other than its mechanism of action, is going to be the fact that when you give bupropion in a patient who is bulimic, uh, or anorexic, you can induce seizures, and that's very dangerous. The reason why is because bupropion limits or decreases the seizure threshold in these patients. So patients who suffer from anorexia or bulimia uh, have a decreased seizure threshold, and when you give bupropion, you put them at a higher risk of developing seizures. You might see that on your board questions. You might even see that while you're practicing for step one. So make sure you guys understand that is an unfavorable side effect when it comes to bupropion toxicity. Now, one favorable side effect to know about bupropion is that it has a favorable sexual side effect, meaning uh, it can often improve sexual dysfunction that's caused by SSRIs. And you can often give this drug with an SSRI because bupropion has no effect on serotonin. You are not increasing the risk of someone getting serotonin syndrome with bupropion and uh, an SSRI. You don't really want to give this with an SNRI because SNRIs have norepinephrine uh, reuptake inhibition activity and you don't want to have too much norepinephrine levels. So with an SSRI, it is okay. With an, sorry, with an SSRI, it's okay. With an SNRI, an RI, it is not okay. So you don't want to give this with an SNRI. And that's all you really need to know about bupropion. Um, and we're going to move on to the next drug, which is mirtazapine. Mirtazapine, in my opinion, is very similar uh, to SSRIs and SNRIs, 
but it is to me like a combination of SNRIs and SSRIs. The reason why is because of its mechanism of action. Mirtazapine inhibits the presynaptic alpha-2 receptors, and by inhibiting, inhibiting these receptors, you're going to have an increase in serotonin and norepinephrine in the synaptic cleft, like an SNRI, right? So we're going to write SNRI in parentheses. It's not an SNRI, it's similar to an SNRI. It also has an effect on the postsynaptic uh, 5-HT2 and 5-HT3 receptors. Right? It antagonizes these receptors, and because it antagonizes only serotonin receptors, you're going to have an increase in serotonin activity, and uh, I equate that to an SSRI. Similar, right? It doesn't do anything really to reuptake, uh, in inhibiting the reuptake. It actually affects the receptors itself, so I want to write it's similar. Not the same, but it's similar. So let's just put the symbol on so you guys can understand. Um, now, it also has one other effect. It also antagonizes H1 receptors, histamine receptors, so it acts like a histamine blocker. And because of its action, it will lead to sedation. Now, this can be desirable in patients who have insomnia. It also leads to increased appetite and weight gain, which is desirable for patients who are underweight and suffering from uh, maybe bulimia, sorry, uh, anorexia and uh, depression at the same time. And it can also lead to dry mouth. So that's pretty much all you need to know about mirtazapine. Uh, we're going to move on to the third drug, which is going to be trazodone. And there's a very easy uh, uh, acronym you can remember, or very easy, I guess you could say, like phrase for this, this drug to remember its side effect profile. Anyway, so what trazodone does is that it inhibits alpha-1, histamine, and postsynaptic serotonin-2 receptors. At the end of the day, this is going to lead to increased serotonin activity in the uh, in the synaptic cleft. Uh, it's also a weak serotonin reuptake inhibitor, so it's a weak SSRI. Right now, uh, this is usually used for insomnia, and the reason why is that at high doses. Uh, you end up having the antidepressant effects. But because of its other side effect profile, mainly the histamine profile, uh, you don't want to give this at high doses. At low doses, at medium doses, you can treat insomnia with it. And uh, when it comes to toxicity, sedation is a very, very important toxic side effect because of the uh, histamine blocking receptor activity. Uh, you're going to lead to the sedation. So that's something you don't want at high doses. Uh, you can also have nausea, Priapism. Priapism is very important because trazodone, one of the side effects of trazodone toxicity is priapism. So the way we like to remember that, there's an easy statement, is instead of saying trazodone, we call this trazaboner because it gives you an erection uh, when you are when you shouldn't have one. So priapism is very important. Uh, and then postural hypotension because of the alpha-1 inhibition. So that is trazodone. Just make sure you remember it works as an SNRI. Uh, sorry, it works as an antidepressant. So it's going to lead to uh, an increase in 5-HT no matter what. But the side effects you need to watch out for are sedation and priapism in trazodone. Next drug is going to be varenicline. Varenicline acts kind of like a uh, kind of like uh, nicotine because it is an agonist, a partial agonist of the nicotinic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. It's usually used for smoking cessation. It makes sense, right? It's antagonized or it's agonizing the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, and because of that, uh, it's going to have toxic side effects similar to nicotine or smoking. So this is going to lead to sleep disturbances because nicotine is a CNS stimulant, right? So uh, because you are you are agonizing or you're upregulating the effect of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, you're going to have sleep disturbances as well as a depressed mood when it comes to toxicity. Now, you can uh, use this uh, uh, for smoking cessation, like we said earlier. And that's all you need to know for varenicline. Very simple drug. And then we have the last two drugs, which are uh, velazidone. Velazidone inhibits uh, serotonin reuptake, leading to increased levels of serotonin, right? So 5-HT levels are going to increase. Uh, and it also functions as a 5-HT1A receptor partial agonist that's makes it useful for major depressive disorder. So not only are you increasing 5-HT levels, uh, but you're also increasing 5-HT uh, action by the fact that it is 
it's a partial agonist of the receptor because uh, of its side effect because of its actual profile uh, and uh, its its mechanism you want to watch out for headaches you want to watch out for diarrhea nausea and anticholinergic effects right so the anticholinergic effects may mean dry mouth constipation can also occur uh, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you watch out for that. Um, and then finally, when it comes to velazodone, because you are increasing serotonin right here, very important, velazodone can lead to serotonin syndrome if it's taken with other serotoninergic, serotonergic agents like an SSRI, SSRI, SNRI, TCA, monoamine uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitor etc etc so anything else that increases uh, serotonin you really don't want to take velazodone with that drug because it will lead to serotonin syndrome and finally the last drug the last atypical antidepressant you need to know is vortioxetine okay this drug functions very similar to velazodone in the sense that it inhibits 5-HT reuptake inhibits uh, serotonin reuptake leading to increased serotonin activity, right? So it's the same. So 5-H5-hydroxytryptamine aka serotonin levels. Uh, it's also going to act as a 5-HT1A receptor partial agonist. So increase 5-HT activity that also occurs. And it's going to act as a postsynaptic 5-HT3 receptor antagonist, okay? This is the kicker. It also antagonizes the 5-HT3 receptor. Now, it's also used for major depressive disorder. And when it comes to toxic toxicity, you want to watch out for nausea. Sexual dysfunction is very often uh, a side effect of vortioxetine. Uh, sleep disturbances, anticholinergic effects are also uh, still on the toxicity side effect profile. Now, this again, similar to uh, velazodone, vortioxetine is also going to cause serotonin syndrome to occur if you take it along with a serotonergic agent, with another serotonergic agent. So you want to be careful because of its main uh, mechanism of action. So with that being said, we have pretty much covered each of the six atypical antidepressants. We've discussed uh, bupropion, how it only increases norepinephrine and dopamine. You can take it with an SSRI and you want to watch out for seizures in uh, bulimic or uh, anorexic patients. When it comes to mirtazapine, it's very similar to an SSRI and an SNRI because it affects both of those uh, receptors. It, it, it also works as a H1 or histamine antagonist. Uh, leading to histamine blocking effects like sedation. We talked about trazodone, and the main thing you want to watch out for trazodone is going to be sedation due to the histamine blockade and priapism. Uh, that is a huge, huge red flag when it comes to step one. So trazodone, and the the way I remember trazodone and priapism is trazodone equals trazoboner. And uh, varenicline, varenicline is kind of a drug uh, that is kind of like a nicotine uh, drug, right? It's used for smoking cessation. That's the main reason it's used. So it agonizes the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, and the side effects are going to be similar to smoking. It's a stimulant, so you're going to have uh, sleep disturbances with renocline. Velazodone and the last one, vortioxetine, are very similar. They're going to inhibit 5-HT reuptake, serotonin reuptake, and they're going to uh, be agonizing the 5-HT1 receptor, except that uh, vortioxetine is also going to antagonize 5-HT3. That's the main difference between the two. They're both going to be able to cause serotonin syndrome when it comes to taking this drug with other serotonergic uh, agents. And with that being said, I hope this lecture was useful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And if you guys don't know, you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service. Just search Mad Medicine wherever you guys listen to podcasts, and we will pop up. Thank you, and go ahead and continue on to the next lecture.